Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Richard here. It's uh, Sunday the um, 5th of September 2010 and I thought um, today will be part two of the uh, Garrard record deck SP25 Mark III. Um, before I start with that, I thought perhaps I'd just mention to you a couple of parish notices. Um, some of you may remember the Malcolm Laycock uh, Golden Age of Swing collection, which is uh, this one here, um, which I purchased on, from the Daily Telegraph. In fact, I've got uh, my friend Frank Sinatra there, Frankie, uh, singing nicely with Tommy Dolsey, um, uh, one of the CDs which I'm very fond of. And unfortunately, <laughs> Mr. CDG 3000 CD player has developed a irritating little uh, noise which actually when I was given this piece of uh, equipment which was apparently thrown away there was the noise and I managed to oil it's the it's the capstan that goes on the top of the CD to keep it in place and I oiled it and clearly it's redeveloped the same fault so I'll have to have him apart to have a sort out sometime but anyway it's uh, he's there but uh, I have discovered actually that same record that same album this one it, I've actually got on an LP, um, and I because I started thinking actually I quite like these songs. It must be something you know. And then looked in my collection, there it was. But what I was going to say is that um, uh, somebody who was at school with Malcolm Laycock uh, got hold, got contacted me on YouTube and gave me a great note. Excuse me, I just turned Frank down a bit um, in telling me that uh, he was at school and that uh, Malcolm uh, was actually um, uh, there as, a, as was his teacher at school and uh, how well he'd done and that he'd be very honoured to know that I'd actually mentioned him in passing. So I just thought I'd mention that as, as a parish notice more than anything else, that, uh, you know, there's interesting how you mention something on YouTube and something that somebody else pops up. Um, the other thing is that um, from the last posting I played uh, some music by uh, Ivan Novello and several of you have said how very nice that was. If you want to hear the whole of those 12 tracks from that album out by Ivan Novello and uh, this one here, Ivan Novello's Greatest Hits, then it is available on my, on my channel for you to actually uh, view. But another person contacted me and said that um, he knew Mary Ellis very well and that when she was actually in her 90s, he often had conversations with her about uh, Ivan Novello and in fact Ivan Novello had written music for her, which I thought was a marvellous link actually when you think about it. So the, the power of the internet really is, uh, um, you know, a, a marvellous thing. I mean, used in the the right way. There's lots of things I think the internet are probably very, uh, are very are responsible for, which actually I wouldn't agree with. And um, but I thought those in our community where people are very case joined up, and uh, he do feel like it's a family out there. And so I thought I'd mention that. And uh, so um, and I'll put that uh, link. I think it's actually on the posting of the last one uh, regarding the SP uh, 25 Mark III. So if you want to see that, I think he's actually. Uh, possibly there, or the last one on the SP uh, 25 Mark II. Anyway, I ramble on. Um, so, uh, anyway, you also remember that when I last did my, the last posting for the SP 25 Mark II, the record deck that is now very much uh, in the main house, um, I was actually using, a, I was going to purchase a new stylus for the, uh, what's it called, the Autophon, autophon uh, Danish stylus or cartridge that came with that, uh, the stylus for that cartridge. Well, I've done that now. I've actually got that through, through uh, eBay. And uh, I have to say, that cartridge produces the most marvellous sound. I've been using Sanyo for a long time, uh, purely because they're fairly cheap. I mean, they're £25 for a cartridge. But this cartridge, which I did have originally several years ago, but because I couldn't get a replacement stylus for it, believe it or not, I thought I couldn't anyway, before the advent of eBay probably, I just purchased a, a, a off-the-shelf cartridge from Maplin's, which was a Sanyo one. Well, there's been quite a good write-up in the um, gramophone magazine, uh, classical music magazine, which is here, and says how well and how how much 
these cartridges and styluses are actually valued. And in fact, um, Orthothon have been, uh, been going um, since I think 1969 altogether, um, producing a series of cartridges using the, the, the they call the VMS or the Variable Magnetic Shunt uh, principle, which is um, the way that the the obviously the um, sound is transferred from the moving from the coil inside the cartridge, I suppose. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's actually a very good cartridge and a very good stylus. So if you're interested at all, wondering which you know about this, certainly it's worth one worth getting, as it were. Now, I've done some work on the um, uh, Garrard Deck SP25 Mark III. So I thought I'd share that with you today. Um, I'm just very conscious of the time because the clock is sitting directly behind Mr. Panasonic. And I think we're already into possibly about six minutes, uh, so um, I'm just very aware of that. Um, so, um, but anyway, let's crack on. I'll see how far we might have to do two parts of this, but hopefully not. Right, you remember last the last time um, I just had the deck laid out and um, hadn't really done very much to it. Literally, just literally come out the box. But I've done a bit more work since then, so I thought I'd share that with you. The first part to say is that um, the plinth actually comes apart in several parts. I'm going to share that with you now. Uh, clearly you've got the nice plastic top, but also the motorboard, which is this piece. It's all plastic construction. There's no, there's no wood in it at all, even though the seller had said it was a wood plinth. It's not wood. It's just a, uh, a wood sort of fibreboard type stuff. This is the motorboard, so I've cleaned that up. Plastic motorboard. And then after that you get... Let's put that down there. You get the bit that was thought to be wood, which in fact is that fibre stuff that you get making your speakers out of. But it's in good condition and it will polish up well. I've just given it a really good clean with some cleaner, like a flash base cleaner, which has got all the marks on. Uh, you get this little bit here, which keeps the cable in place. Let's put that over here now. Let's just find a hand for that. And then you, you have this piece here, which is the base, the plastic base, and that's where the, the cables go out through there. So um, I've cleaned all that up. So that's all been dealt with. Let's just put this back over here gently. The plastic, uh, the actual plastic uh, cover comes, is actually, is actually um, very well looked after. I'll just get that for you. There we go, there's the plastic case, and that's clearly, I mean, there's not a scratch on that, so that's very good. And it has these two bits here which fit into the top of the base, which is quite useful. And uh, and uh, for me, I shall probably use it without the plastic top, because uh, in the office where I've got it situated above the JVC, there isn't really room for it to open with this distance on the shelving up there. But the actual deck itself is interesting. Um, Anyway, cheers everyone to a cup of tea. It came, if you remember, with this DIN socket. Um, so I'm just going to take Mr. Panasonic off the perch here so I can show you. If I don't press the pause, which I've had a habit of doing. There we go. Right, okay, so the DIN socket was here. Now this was um, attached to the cabling, this cabling here. And what I've done is I've replaced that with some RCA cables that I bought yesterday. <coughs> here we go. Because there's no reason why this cabling needs changing. It's screen cabling. It was clearly used with the DIN socket. Um, and by using the um, handbook, which is over here, I was able to use the same wiring diagram and actually replace um, the DIN with the RCAs. So in fact they're working well there now. And what I've done, I've added an additional uh, grounding cable here using that, um, making my own uh, horseshoe type clip to go on the end. Now what I discovered with the Mark II was that I said originally I didn't need it. In fact when I got to the the uh, Kenwood amplifier, it did actually have a slight hum, and when I attached the grounding 
to it, it actually stops. So it's worth putting one in anyway, even if you may not need it. Um, this is already grounded anyway because um, there's an additional grounding through the screening, and I think you can probably see that. This centre one here has been, these are the two screens coming out of either side, and what's happened is they've grounded it via the chassis through this pole. And what I've done is I've just soldered on um, onto this, uh, this free tab here from the motor uh, an additional grounding because uh, that's grounded via the chassis here, so that should, should help. I've also changed the cable uh, and I've grounded the cable. The cabling was actually this very, this like lamp wire that came with it, so I've changed that completely. There was no earthing. I've now earthed it via the earthing contact, which is actually mentioned on the in the handbook. Uh, the handbook is actually quite specific about the uh, 222 40 volts, which is uh, this bit here, so I followed the, diagram, the wiring diagram, so I make sure that the current is flowing in the right direction between uh, live and negative, and that's there, so I was able to follow that. Um, and at the moment I'm in the process of just cleaning off all the old grease, which is all on these bits here, um, and also on the speed controller, which is here. Uh, there's actually a label on here which uh, which says uh, SP25 Mark III, and in fact there's a number there. So now whether 74750, whether that gold G800, whether that 74 means it was 1974, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't find any other numbers. Um, the motor looks fairly new to me. I'm going to, I've actually slackened off these two screws, I'm going to re-grease the end poles and on the other side, um, And but uh, overall it's actually in quite good condition. If we just turn her over for you, let's have a quick look, there we go. Let's just turn this around. There we go, so that's the back side of it. I've taken the Stanton cartridge out, um, and I had an interesting message back from Chris Vagel uh, uh, on YouTube, who I often watch his posting. And Chris is actually an ex-DJ, or is a DJ, and he says that actually he wouldn't use Stanton cartridges. His view is that they're, they're, they're suck, they suck, as he said. So I asked him why he thought they suck, when they're the industry standard. And he said he's had some records destroyed by them. But, I mean, all the write-ups I've been reading have actually said something contrary to that. So I would be interested to know, you know, what people think, really, on that one. Uh, but anyway, the, um, I've taken the turntable off, so we're now at this... There we are, the turn... Now, I have to say, I think um, Garrard were trying to save a bit of cost here because this, this turntable is... The turntable is much lighter than the other one though it's still a steel construction. Later ones did have a plastic insert to connect with the idle wheel. Um, but I noticed that the the ball race, which you can see in there, is actually made of plastic, where before they were always made of steel construction, holding the ball bearings. Um, so I had to be a bit careful when cleaning them up. But um, And the other thing that was interesting, it came with a removable centrepiece, so which fits in here. Uh, which was an interesting bit there. Um, uh, so and also I've taken off the velocity uh, uh, cog as well. So there we go. Anyway, time's moving on and speak to you all very soon. Take care. Bye.